everybody, it's John from Seattle Coffee Gear. I'm back in the commercial kitchen and today we're doing a video on volumetrics and commercial machines. Uh, this is a question we get asked a lot. It's on a lot of machines listed as AV, like auto volumetrics, or some machines call it just volumetric, or some machines call it the digit version of a machine. But anytime you see volumetrics, Basically what it's referring to is a way that you can program the machine to stop pulling a shot at a certain point so you don't have to be there to tell the machine to stop. So if a machine is a semi-automatic and doesn't say volumetric, what that means is it just has a stop-start switch. So for example, if I press this button, this is gonna keep running forever until I tell it to stop. So if a machine does not have volumetrics, that's what you're gonna be working with. So multitasking is a little bit more difficult. Consistency can be more difficult, but uh, it is what some people want because they want their baristas to be very focused on the machine. On a machine like this, usually you'll have two buttons, sometimes four buttons, and those are your volumetric settings. So on this machine, I have two settings per group. I have setting one and setting two. Sometimes you'll see this as a single shot and a double shot or places or machines will show like a single short shot, a single a double short shot, a single long shot, a double long shot if they have those four buttons. But you can program those buttons to be whatever you want. So now that we understand a little bit more about what the term is, let's talk about how it works because that's another question we get a lot. So if I go to the machine and I, let's see what this is set at without anything in there. If I run this with no coffee or anything, that just ran for four seconds. Let's see how much water is dispensed in that four seconds. I'm gonna set this underneath here and run it. One of the questions I'll get from folks is, I programmed my machine, my machine to run for you know 20 seconds and but it's not stopping at 20 seconds and sometimes what i'll run into is folks will try to run this for 20 seconds and then save that programming thinking that they're programming the time but you're not programming the time you're programming the volume of water that's flowing out so i got say two and a half almost three ounces of water here but if I pack this portafilter with coffee and then tamp it and then put that in the machine, the coffee is gonna restrict the flow of water and the coffee is going to absorb some of that water. So my total volume of water that's dispensed by the machine is still gonna be about three ounces, but some of that's gonna be absorbed by the coffee. So my total amount that I'll get in my pitcher here, is probably gonna be closer to around two ounces. Let's grind some coffee and just see what the difference is here. I don't know. I'm betting that accounting probably used this grinder this morning. So let's get some fresh stuff. All right, that's a big dose. That's all right. I'm not drinking this today, we're just Showing it, tamp. So that looked like over 20 grams of coffee just to my naked eye, but I'm not great at that. So let's see what we get here. So same one button, it was at four seconds before when we didn't have any coffee in there and it was just the water. We'll see if I get an alarm here. So sometimes what you'll also see is a flow meter alarm. And a flow meter alarm means that the flow meter isn't seeing water passing through it. So if the coffee is restricting the water too much, there's pressure building up inside the machine and the flow meter isn't sensing water flowing through it. So that's what a flow meter alarm would be. We're gonna open this machine up in a bit and look inside it and show you where those flow meters are so you can have a better understanding of how those work. Because the flow meter is what controls the volumetrics of the machine. So we're almost at 60 seconds here. 
But this is a good example to show you that time doesn't really have an effect on volumetrics. It's about the volume of water that's being dispensed, not the time that it's being dispensed for. Because right now we're at 73 seconds and we're almost at an ounce and a half of liquid in the glass. I'm glad I'm not drinking this today. So that finally stopped at 85 seconds and I have just over an ounce and a half of liquid in my shot glass here. So that means that the coffee itself would have had to absorb about an ounce and a half of water in the puck and maybe any that's like sitting on top of the puck or anything like that. But the big concept to understand with volumetrics is that it's not the time you're programming, it's the volume of water that you're programming. So if I were to change my grind setting and make this coarser or say drop my time here, I just have that on manual, flushed for too long. So that's a lot less coffee in my porta filter. Sloppy tamp, that's okay. We'll wait for that to fill. All right, and let's see where we're at now. So that started pulling way faster because there's a lot less coffee in there, restricting the flow of water and absorbing the water. I'm betting that this will pull for like 40 seconds maybe, maybe 30 seconds, depending on how it's looking now. But I should have a larger sh amount of coffee in here towards the end of this because there's less coffee absorbing water inside the actual basket. I'll see what I get. We're almost there. It looks like we're right at one and a half ounces again, but it was only about 40 seconds instead of that 85 seconds. So it absorbed about the same amount of water, which is interesting there, but I could have weighed that to be more accurate. Where are these out? If you were gonna program the volumetrics on this machine, I would suggest having a scale nearby so you can make sure you're using the same amount of coffee each time. And then you can also weigh your uh, coffee out. And we have a video about dialing in that explains that a little bit better. So if you wanna know more about brew ratios and that, you can check out that video on dialing in. Let's look inside the machine and see those flow meters and talk a little bit more about how those work. All right, we're now looking inside the espresso machine. This is the RE Dopia from Rocket Espresso. So it's a dual boiler machine. We have a steam boiler back here and then a brew boiler up here. And this is a two group model. And we have our valves right here. These are the solenoid valves that control the flow of the water to the group. And then if you look over here, here we have the flow meters. And these are actually what's controlling the volumetrics of the machine. So if you look, we have an arrow going in, arrow going in, and then we have an arrow going out. So water flows through that pipe and then comes up here to the group and then goes to the coffee where you're brewing. So inside this, there's a little magnet that's simplified if you think about it. It's just on a wheel. And as the water passes through this, it spins around in a circle. And so then the machine, counts how many times that wheel spins around and it remembers that and that's how it remembers how much water flows through. So when I program the single shot button, once I start pulling it, water is flowing through here. This little wheel is spinning and the machine's going, okay, one revolution, two revolutions, three revolutions. And then when I stop it, 
the machine says, okay, that was 21 revolutions. I'm gonna save that. So then whenever somebody presses that single shot button, I'm gonna let this spin 21 times and then I'm gonna turn it off. So that's a basic understanding of how volumetrics work and how these flow meters control the volume of water that flows through them. Certain machines will have uh, four magnet flow meters. So that means instead of just one that has to do a complete circle, it has four different spots that it can measure from. Again, that's simplified and I'm not uh, a professional tech or anything here, but that's an understanding of how these flow meters work. So if you get a flow meter alarm, that's because there's too much restriction at the group. So if you're back flushing or if there's a lot of coffee in here, water isn't getting through the coffee. So this isn't moving. It knows the pump is running, but no water is getting through this. So it's just warning you that there's something blocking the water from getting through and it's trying to prevent you from damaging the machine. But let's reset here and we'll wrap up the video. That about wraps up our video on volumetrics and flow meters for commercial espresso machines. I hope you learned something today. I hope it didn't confuse you further about what volumetrics are. But anytime you're looking at a machine and you see auto volumetric or volumetric, or you just see these buttons that you can program, remember that you're programming the volume of water, you're not programming the time, and that's a better way to do it because it's gonna be more consistent because if your tamp is slightly different and say you have a massive crack through the center of your puck, water is gonna find that and it's gonna be gushing through that part of the puck. If you are set for the same amount of time, you're gonna be letting a lot more water through and you're gonna be getting a different shot than you programmed. Granted, if you're getting a lot of channeling, it's gonna taste different regardless, but if you use a little bit less or a little bit more coffee, then if you had it programmed by time, it would change how the coffee would taste. So like we saw with the shots with just water, a lot of coffee and less coffee, they all pulled at different, different times, but we got the same amount of volume just about. So like I said, I hope this has been helpful for you. You understand volumetrics a bit better if you don't. Leave us a comment down below and maybe we'll make another video to address some of those questions. You can also call us or send us an email and we'd be happy to help there too. Thank you again for watching. Check out the rest of our videos. We definitely appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, like it. That helps us a little bit. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos that we make. Thank you again for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day.